praise the lord welcome back to my channel my name is cynthia i am your host and today we have a podcast and before we start let us pray heavenly father we thank you for the gift of life we thank you for your wisdom we thank you for your love we thank you for your favor we thank you for your faithfulness Jehovah Lord, thank you for this time that you have given us. King of glory, I commit my listeners into your able hands. That it is you who has brought them into this channel. And Jehovah Lord, you know what they are struggling with. I believe and pray that through this podcast, through just hearing my voice, through their faith, that Jehovah Lord, you will deliver them from whatever they are suffering from, whatever they're struggling with in jesus name we pray so my dear listener today we are going to talk about a topic entitled god is a match maker okay god is a match maker so if you're writing notes you need to just write god is a match maker then you underline and um isn't it amazing and exciting that God first appeared on the scene of human history in the role of a matchmaker? In Genesis 2.22, God appeared for the first time as a matchmaker. What human mind can fathom the death of love and joy that filled the heart of the great creator has he united the man and woman in the first marriage ceremony between Adam and Eve? Isn't it also amazing that not only does you know human history open with a marriage, it also destined to climax with a marriage. It is John who paints this scene for us in Revelation 19 verses 6 to 9. From Genesis to Revelation, from the first act in Eden to the last act in Heavenlies, the central theme of human history is marriage. Throughout this unfolding drama, God himself does not remain merely a remote spectator. It is he who initiates the action and it is in him that it comes to its climax. From beginning to end, he is totally and personally involved. The Genesis account reveals four virtually important truths about marriage, all of which still apply today because the standards of God does not change. The first truth about marriage is that the concept of marriage originated entirely with God. Adam had no part in it. It was not a plan he formulated. He did not even ask for such a provision. It was God, not Adam, who decided that Adam needed a wife. Adam was not even aware of his own need. The second truth is that it was God who formed Eve for Adam. He alone knew the kind of mate Adam needed. The third truth is that it was God who presented Eve to Adam. Adam did not have to go in search of her. The fourth truth is that it was God who determined the way in which Adam and Eve were to relate to each other. This is where he becomes the matchmaker. So the end purpose of their relationship was perfect unity. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. Genesis 2 verses 24. But how will this happen? Practically, what does this entail? 
the process of leaving your father and mother and uniting with wife and becoming one what does it entail the first thing that is in it entails is that a christian will enter into marriage not because it is his or her decision but because it is god's the second is that a christian man will trust god both to choose and to prepare for him the mate he needs on the other side a christian woman will trust god to prepare her for the husband for whom god has appointed her the third that a christian man walking in the will of god will find that god brings to him the mate whom he has chosen and prepared for him on the other side a christian woman will allow god to lead her to the husband for whom he has prepared for her the fourth is that the end purpose of marriage today is still what it was for adam and eve perfect unity that is the purpose of marriage perfect unity only those who fulfill the first three requirements however can expect also to enjoy the fulfillment of the end purpose what does that mean it means that if a christian will enter into marriage not because it is his or her decision but because it is god's then a christian will enjoy perfect unity it also means that if a christian man will trust god both to choose and to prepare for him the mate he needs and if a christian woman will trust god to prepare her for the husband to whom god has appointed her then both will enjoy perfect unity it also means that if a christian man walking in the will of god will find that god brings to him the mate whom he has chosen and prepared for him then this christian man and the christian woman who god has prepared for him will enjoy perfect unity since creation god has been in the business of choosing the perfect mate for each of his children while this up here could be dismissed as old fashion and super spiritual there is no devaluation of the kingdom currency and principles there is no erosion of the standards and values of the kingdom the same requirements in adam's time are the same requirements for us today while this is a sharp contrast to the worldly view of marriage we must entrust god to bring along the best mate for us the world has pushed god out of the equation but if we must marry well we must start with god we must realize that he gives the best to those who leave him to chance what does he do he gives the best to those who leave him the chance okay let us pray heavenly father we thank you for the gift of life we thank you for this segment this opportunity to be able to share your word and i hope and pray that someone has been blessed someone has learned something and through this message someone's relationship someone's marriage someone's entire life is going to be delivered from the hands of the enemy in jesus mighty name we pray amen god bless you see you again next time goodbye